whatever reason, you've gotten knocked down. And the number one thing you have to watch out for is losing your position. You do not want to go from here to there. You do not want to go from here to the person sitting on your chest. Maintain position before you do anything else. Position trumps striking, it trumps attacks, it trumps kicking. What we're going to do now is actually move to the kicking component because what it's going to do is give you enough distance to stand up. First, what not to do. When I was introduced to sort of ground fighting as important in self-defense, the standard thing that was taught was come up on your side and lash out with side kicks here or maybe even round kicks there. The trouble is, while those kicks might work to create distance, it's very easy for the person to move behind me. So Eva's down now in this classic side kick, round kick position. And the classic thing that was taught is to lash out at the knee or the shin with side kicks. Go ahead, go harder, go harder, go harder. This was taught as break the guy's knee. This could maybe hurt my knee if it was fully straight. If she hits me right now, true, that could do damage. If I'm in any kind of aggressive athletic stance, it's only damage to the shin. The odds of breaking my knee are almost zero. And then there are other ways to entangle the legs, but the problem with all this stuff here, go ahead, as she's kicking, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Eventually, if I do this, I'm essentially past her legs. There. Where's the guard now? The legs are pointing that way and I'm past. She's sacrificed position for kicking. You do not want to do that. So what we're going to do now is cover four ways that you can kick from the ground that don't sacrifice position, allow you to reset the guard at any point, and ultimately allow you to stand up. For each of these four kicks, we're going to cover how to do it and then some training methods to make them as powerful and as instinctive as they can be. The first kick that you should definitely practice, train, and incorporate into your arsenal is the bicycle kick. She's going to be flat on her back, remember, both legs coiled in, showing me the bottom of her feet and having her legs slightly apart. Now it's like riding a bicycle. She's going to kick one leg out and keep the other one in, then she's going to exchange. As long as I stay in range, she can kick. So where is she going to kick? Obviously, if I stick my face in here, she's going to hit my face. If I'm here and she can't hit my face, she can go for my leg. Notice how she's turning her foot outwards. Slide in, turn here, please. In. If she's kicking with a vertical foot, in the heat of the moment with movement, it can be hard to find. She turns her foot sideways here. She's got a much bigger striking area, much more likely to make contact. The goal here is not to break my leg or break my knee. If that happens, hallelujah, buy a lottery ticket. That's fantastic. The point here is to make distance and to discourage me from putting pressure on her. So she can lash out at me repeatedly. Go ahead. Other leg. There. 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 I, I mean, I don't have particularly tough shins. I've just got a little bit of pain tolerance. It's going to discourage me from coming closer, but it's not going to break my leg. Not unless it's completely straight, which we're not going to demo today. <laughs> Obviously, if I'm here, she can target the groin. If I'm here, she can target the chest to drive me away. If I'm stupid, she can hit the face. So how do you train this? Well, a couple different ways. The most basic way is just with a kicking shield. So you're on your back, or she's on your, her back, and I'm going to circle. Can she kick me here? No. I step in, she's going to bicycle kick. One, two, three, until I back out. We're here. She's got to track me. Remember the rocking motion with a foot on the ground as I come in. One, two, three, four. Go away. Here. One. If I want to get fancier, I can do stuff like this. There. Smaller target, harder. Maybe we can go for this drill. You either hit my shin with a foot turned sideways, or you're going to kick this if it comes in. So there. You might want to wear a shin pad. There. 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 So she's getting good at targeting and hitting with the bottom of her foot using a bicycle motion. We can work that in 
to the guard passing drills. If you have a sane partner, we can do this sort of thing where the shield is completely out of the way. So you cannot kick me when the shield is, <laughs> when the shield is gone. We're just going to do this guard retention thing here where you got your, using your feet to track my motion, maybe using your hand if need be. Then I swing here, she goes into kicking, then I put this back. We're here, we're here. Now, one caveat here, you don't want to do this. Just keep on kicking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is not realistic. You do that, or even if you think about doing that, your legs are going to get so tired that you won't be able to maintain the position. You need to keep some energy in your legs in order to do the most important thing, which is what? Keep me in the guard. Fight for the position. So use this when you think you can get away with it. You don't just stand here kicking continuously <laughs> all the time. The most important thing is maintaining position. Position first, then bicycle kicks when you can work them in. The next move is one that you should use once in a while. Don't make this your main kick from your back and we'll cover why in just a little while. So Eva's gonna bring both her feet in and then she's gonna do a double stomp here. Usually this is aimed for the torso. This is gonna look something like this. If she's flat on her back, I step in and she double stomps. Here, there. You can also work this with a person sitting up. So she's sitting up, she's trying to work her way back to her feet, but I come rushing in and she falls and stomps. I back off, here. Now, remember I said you shouldn't do continuous bicycle kicks from the back? That's even more true. If you're here doing double stomp, double stomp, double stomp, double stomp, in the stress of the moment, especially if you're holding your breath, and remember that in a self-defense situation, your adrenaline will be 10 times what it is in a training situation, you can get exhausted with this so quickly. So maybe do this as a conditioning exercise, but don't do this as a fighting technique. The other problem with the double stomp is, there, if there's a slight turn, did you notice how her feet went this way? I set it up by turning it, the pad, to the left. Especially if you're tired, do a double stomp. Now I'm here. Now she's in a compromised position. If she was doing the single bicycle kicks, even if I knock this to the side, that other leg's still ready there to defend. Another value of this double stomp motion is not really doing damage, but it's clearing distance. If we're here and we've ended up in this situation and I'm reaching in, trying to get her face or grab her hair or attack her, punch her, you can collapse your knees in, load up your legs, and then push the person away. Go ahead. The leg press, which is essentially what she's doing, is a very powerful motion. The leg press in the gym, you can probably move more weight than you can with any other exercise, right? You can leg press at a 45 degree angle, way more than you can bench press, way more than you can clean and jerk, probably more than you can squat. So she's using one of the strongest motions to push me away. So you can well practice this drill, where we're here, I'm leaning in, she's going to load me up and see how far you can send your opponent or training partner back. Once again, remember, this is a spice. You don't use this all the time. You're not here continuously trying to push me back. At a certain point, you have to cut your losses and go into guard maintenance mode, which means she stays here. She makes sure I don't pass her legs. And now she picks and chooses her strikes here as opposed to always going for the big double leg stomp. We're gonna do four kicks. The first one, the bicycle kick, super important. The last kick, the sliding kick, super important. I was wondering about whether to show this one, but it's a lot of fun. It's very useful in certain applications and it's a good training kick, so I'm gonna show this. But this is, again, a spice that you use judiciously. If her foot is on my hip or even on my knee, it allows her to reach up higher. Right now, her foot's nowhere near my face. If she lifts her hip up, it comes really, really close to my face. So, same on the hip. She can chamber her leg and then reach up and extend her hip as well. And it gives an unexpected probably 8 to 12 extra inches of reach. 
So, given that I like my face, we're going to practice with this. One foot goes on the hip, I'm going to back this up, and she's going to reach up and kick right for the chin. Right for the chin with the heel. There, there, there. Same screw on this side. She's going to keep her foot in the hip, and she's going to lunge up and kick the jaw with her heel. She's not going to stay elevated the whole time. Lift your hips up, please. She's not going to bicycle kick from here, because that's not powerful. It's also tiring for her, and it's predictable. She's going to be flat on the ground, and then she's going to lash out with that. Lash out. Now, just as with any technique, if she does this too many times in a row, she goes to the well too often, it can bite her in the ass. She's got a foot in the hip, She's kicking me. Whoa, I avoided that. But she's going again and again. Eventually, I'm going to do this. Again, I'm past her legs. Same is true. If I keep on throwing nothing but the right cross at you, eventually, you're going to figure out how to counter that right cross. This is something that you do occasionally in the context of, say, we're doing this passing the guard drill. We're here. Once in a while, she's going to lift her heel and lift her hip and hit me in the face. Be very, very careful with your training partner. We're going to use this as a spice. We're going to add it to the other drills and use it once in a while. So we might be doing the basic guard maintenance drills here, where the foot on the hip, she's using her hands. I might use my hand to strip her foot. We're there. When I go here, she's going to kick. She's not going to kick a million times, except as a conditioning exercise. But in the context of a drill, this might be how it gets used in a real fight. You'll be here, passing the foot. I'm not really trying to pass the guard. There, 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 there. So when this pad is completely out of the way, she's not kicking. I gotta be careful not to be floating around here because now she doesn't know when I'm feeding it to her or not. It's gonna be completely behind my back. So there's no confusion here. From here, I back up, she sits up a bit, I come back in, here, now, there, there. So the bicycle kick is super important. The first kick we covered is super important because it allows you to keep your opponent off of you. This is the next most important kick, but I put it last because it's the most technical to learn. It's either the sliding kick or the ranging kick. If we're here, I can't stand up from this position unless I do a ton of gymnastics and I do a fancy flying kip. We'll cover that in the advanced series, which will be 10 times the cost. As we talked about, my goal from here is to sit up. Right now, I'm within striking distance. She could knee me in the face. She could punch me in the head. This would be bad. So what I'm gonna do here to set up the ranging kick, to set up the sliding kick, is I'm gonna bicycle kick her until I can no longer touch her shin. When I can no longer touch her shin, I sit up. Now, this is important. This is where a lot of people screw up. They're sitting like this. You can sit like this, but you can't go to the ranging kick and you can't go to the stand up from here. One foot is going to be here. My left foot is in with my heel relatively close to my butt. My right hand is behind me on the ground. My left hand is up to protect my face. This way, if there's a kick, if there's something happening, if she's trying to grab my, my hair, this head is up to try and defend myself. The leg that I'm going to be kicking with her with is the bottom leg. There. Now that looks like the world's wimpiest motion, and it is. That's because this is not the kick. The kick is here. To get this kick, I'm going to take all my weight, put on my, my right hand and my left foot, so opposite sides of my body, I'm going to practice this motion here. I don't stay up on my hand and my foot the whole time, but I have to have that capability of suddenly sliding forward. So my weight's on my bum right now, my hand's up, my hand's behind me. I'm going to slide forward and kick. It's deceptive because if she's just standing there in a stance, she thinks this is as far as I can reach. With that additional sliding motion, I can get another 8 inches to 12 inches, just like the climbing kick. So, once I can no longer touch her with a ranging kick, then I know it's time to stand up, which we'll cover in the next section. We can train this very gently, 
with my goal being just to touch her shin. I'm not kicking here initially. We'll get to that with pads here in just a second. I'm going to get used to the, the distance here. Yes, I think I can touch that front leg. There. Here, I'll be kind. I'm going to try and touch just that front shin. There we go. There we go. She's a bit further away. Can I still do it? Uh, not really. So now she comes forward a bit. Ah, now I don't even have to do that much. Notice I'm not up on my arm the whole entire time. This isn't stable. This is tiring. It's also not very powerful. Mostly, I'm going to sit on my butt. When it comes time to kick, I can lunge forward. See, I actually ignored the front leg and I went for the back leg. So now we're going to go over some ways you can drill this with more power and make it more realistic. Getting kicked in the shins a million times, though, is going to suck in the long run. So I'm going to use a kicking shield. I'm going to put it right on my shin, basically push it down so it's a little bit stable, and I can either just stand here and let her kick and, you know, kick and choose. Pick and choose her kicks, just to get the, the basic motion down. Or we can turn into a reaction drill, where when I step forward, she lashes out. We're here, no point in her kicking here. But as soon as I step, she stomps. There, she stomps. We can also practice it against the wall. So we're both going to go against the wall here. It's good to drill to do at home, if you have a padded wall. And we're both going to be sitting in the basic position. Notice I cannot touch the wall, but I can lunge forward. So we're just going to play with this motion here. Kick. 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 You do the same thing on a punching bag. So you can actually develop a fair amount of power with that kick. Now let's put it into the context of using it to set up the stand-up. In most self-defense and street situations, it's going to be a strong priority to get to your feet. You can run. If you've got some kickbox, you can kickbox. You know, you can, you're not trapped on the ground. In certain circumstances, I would stay on the ground, but in most, I would stand up and try and disengage. But the trouble is, if I just try and stand up here, I'm going to get kicked in the face. If I turn away here, I'm going to get choked. I have to keep my eyes on her and go up to my feet in a method where I'm ready to go back to safety. If at any point what I'm trying to do doesn't work, I'm going to abandon ship and come back to the relative safety of here or here. So that's a four-step process of getting to your feet. Let's first just focus on one of the technical elements of the stand-up, the stand-up itself, and then we'll put it into context of doing it against an aggressive attacker. So the basic stand-up motion is this. I'm on my side, one foot's planted, my hand's planted. Remember, we were doing this kick. That hip being off the ground, being able to be off the ground, is key here. We're not so much kicking forward here, but we're going to be pulling backwards. So, my left foot's on the ground, my right hand is also on the ground. This foot is going to come through my legs. My weight comes up, and in slow motion for training, I'm going to bring this foot back here. Here. Now, I want to get into the habit of automatically taking a step backwards so that I'm not ending up in the splits here with somebody on top of me. So let's do that motion again. We're here. My weight's going to come up on my hand and my foot. This leg is going to retract between my arm and my leg. Here. 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 And a half step backwards just so that I've got some extra distance. On the other side, it's exactly the same. In this case, my left leg is down. Sorry, my right leg is down. My left leg is behind me, my weight comes off my hip, you put a piece of paper underneath here, no problem. I'm going to step back here, come up, and a half shuffle backward. So from the front, I might start standing, hand goes on the ground, back foot sits through. I'm going to change sides. Now it's my left hand down, my right foot down, stand up, here. Left hand goes down, foot goes through. Right now is my right foot down. I'm going to change the other side. Foot comes through. Hand goes down, foot comes through. 
switch here. This motion is used a ton in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there are all kinds of variations of it, including not coming all the way to your feet. You might come up to your knee here because you've got the weight of your opponent on your shoulder. So there are different variations, but for self-defense, coming up to your feet and then a half shuffle backwards is probably the best way to apply it. So, against an aggressive attacker. It's a four step process. Step one, you're gonna be here in your basic defensive posture. Remember, position over submission, position over striking, position over standing up. You wanna be safe here. First thing I need to do is to create some distance. If she can touch me, then she's too close and I shouldn't be going for the stand up. I've got to get her away from me. How do I do that? Well, first, bicycle kick, whatever's available. Usually that's the shins. If she's really screwing up and sticking her head out over top, that would also create some distance to move her away. Okay, so step one, I've moved her away and I maintained my position. I do whatever it takes to maintain this position. If as I'm kicking, she starts passing the guard, I go into guard maintenance. I forget about making distance. I keep the position first. Then when I can, I start lashing out at the legs. Okay, so now there's distance. I'm gonna try to sit up. I can either try sitting up here proactively, or if she really backs off quite a lot, I'm gonna follow that, her up. Now I'm still, this is the second stage, I'm still in a defensive position here. If she attacks, I go right back here. And then I start at the beginning, I sit up, I'm guarding my face, I'm here. This is still a little bit too close for comfort, so I'm going to use a ranging kick to clear the distance. When I can no longer hit her with a ranging kick, that's when it's okay to stand up. Step one. Basic defensive position, protect yourself at all times, make distance. Step two, sit up, still defend yourself. Step three, ranging kicks. Ranging kicks, when I can no longer touch with a ranging kick, that's when I stand up and I take that extra hop back and now I'm ready to go, or more properly, turn around and run. All right. Now we're going to start putting this all together in a drill. We're going to put the, the kicking, the range finding, and the standing up into a drill. The important thing here is the person who's the feeder, the person who's feeding the pressure. I want to walk a fine line here. I don't want to go so easy that she can do it in slow motion without any pressure at all. And I don't want to go so hard that everything she tries is a failure. I want to find that sweet spot where I'm putting pressure on her, she's sweating, she's working, she's occasionally screwing up and she's still recovering because that's the reality. We want to reinforce success, but at the same time, we have to teach that if you screw something up completely, it's okay, we keep on going, things happen. So we're gonna start here, flat on the back, legs up. Every time I come forward, bicycle kick. Or she can if she wants, do a double kick. There, bicycle kick. As I'm going circling, she's tracking me. As I come in, she kicks. Now, when I back up, she sits up. If I rush back in, she falls back and gets her feet back into play. So now, bicycle kick, we're just doing this distance. And as I go away, she sits up. We could go into the next thing, but if I come forward, we're right back here. So this is the first sort of phase of this drill. So now we're going to start combining some of the ranges. I might start out with basic, basic guard passing here. Notice the shield is behind my body, means don't kick me. So we're here, we're here, she's just tracking me. When I go here, she can kick. Now, I make it very, very clear that there's no kicking involved. We come in here, kick, kick. If I back up, she sits up. Now if I want, I can feed her this, and it's she felt that the distance was right. She can stand up and back away. That was fantastic. Let's do it again. So we're here. We're going to be pressuring her. Pressuring her. Pressuring her. I'm telling her to start going for the shin kick. There. 
There. Let's do that one more time. So I'm pressuring her, I'm feeding her the bicycle kick. There. Now we're just gonna do basic, basic guard maintenance. The reality is she would be kicking me if she felt the opportunity, but it's hard for me to feed the, the kick and to do this guard passing stuff. There, okay, she's using her hand, which is great. So here, there, now, there, there, there. Notice how she's standing up with her hands up, her legs apart, ready to go. If now we want to move into other aspects of combat, like knees and stuff, I can totally continue on from that basic stand-up. So, add a bit of pressure with a kicking shield. If you're really masochistic, add the pressure just with the kicking of the shins. Lie down, please. So we're here, we're just going to start with a basic guard passing here. I'm going to kick at the knees to get the ranging. Okay, so I'm out of range here. She can still hit me with a sliding kick though. Does she no longer hit me? There. That might be how you would train it with a partner who's uh, looking to get his shins conditioned. 